One of the most popular questions in real-world projects and interviews is selecting between SQL and NoSQL databases and the differences. Our goal is to delight the customers and interviewers and not just me. In today's video, I'm going to go over some of the common and average things I hear. Why are they average? And then I'm going to go over a delightful answer that you should say to the interviewer as well as your real-world customers. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Raj. I'm currently a founder of a stealth edtech startup. And before that, I was a principal solutions architect at AWS and distinguished cloud architect at Verizon. I have implemented world scale projects which went on to become official AWS references. I'm also a public speaker, best-selling author, and I've helped many get top tech jobs in AWS, Google, JP Morgan Chase, Microsoft, Reddit, CoreWeave, and more. Okay, let's get started. So the question is, what are the differences between SQL and NoSQL, and how do you select one? The most common but average answer I hear is, SQL holds structured data, and NoSQL holds semi-structured or non-structured data. SQL has strict schema, NoSQL is schemaless. Sounds correct, right? But this is bare minimum, because everyone says it. In real-world projects, there are other considerations that you need to think about. And when you are talking to your customers or the interviewer, and when you talk about those design factors, that's what separates you from the pack. Keep in mind, as a solutions architect, you will be responsible to talking to the application teams and comes up with the right databases. So a great answer is, you start with the structure versus semi-structure, schema versus schemaless, and then you talk about the other factors such as how for SQL databases, you need to vertically scale the writer instances. Whereas NoSQL databases, it scales horizontally. Now there are nuances to it. Depending on the SQL databases, sometimes the storage scales automatically, but the writer instance of the SQL database always need to scale vertically. NoSQL, even the storage, the writer instances and readers, they all can scale horizontally. Next, talk about how SQL databases can support complex queries and joins, and NoSQL databases cannot support complex queries and joins, and the data needs to be denormalized. That means all the necessary information should be in the same NoSQL table. Next, SQL databases are inherently not highly available. However, NoSQL databases are inherently highly available, as in, even in the unlikely event of availability zone going down, your NoSQL database will still be up and running. In SQL databases, you are responsible for making the databases highly available. Next, SQL databases follows ACID properties, which is ideal for transactional databases. And NoSQL follows CAP theorem. But here is where you can go one level deeper. Depending on the database engine, this features may differ. And that's where this video sponsor, MongoDB, comes in. MongoDB Atlas is a unified data platform built on the document model, giving teams the flexibility to adapt quickly and the power to simplify complex architectures. MongoDB Atlas offers a guaranteed 99.995% uptime SLA for any production deployment. Even though in traditional NoSQL databases, you cannot join different tables, with MongoDB, you can join different tables or collections, which is similar to tables in the MongoDB world. And I'm going to show this part in a demo. MongoDB provides schema flexibility, but in addition, developers using MongoDB can choose their level of schema structure and validation, from minimal guidelines for rapid prototyping to strict validation rules for comprehensive governance as applications scale. This adaptive approach eliminates the limitations found in both rigid relational databases and entirely schemaless systems, making it a versatile choice among NoSQL databases. Okay, this part is cool. MongoDB also supports ACID properties. ACID stands for atomic, consistent, isolated, and durable. The entire operation succeeds or it fails completely without any partial updates. MongoDB supports guaranteed multi-document ACID transactions since 2018, 
adding a high degree of confidence and credibility to the claim that MongoDB can indeed handle the most demanding mission-critical enterprise applications. What that means is, even though traditionally SQL databases are used for transactional activities, MongoDB is good for those use cases as well. MongoDB also works as a vector database, allowing you to store, index, and query vector embedding using the new Atlas Vector Data Store. For those of you who have used a dedicated vector database, you know it comes with overhead as well as it's expensive. By offering vector search natively on the Atlas platform, MongoDB eliminates the operational overhead and cost of managing a fragmented multi-tool architecture for your applications. MongoDB also allows you to do analytics without moving the data to a separate analytics database. Because of this reason, MongoDB is a unified database which supports your transactional activities, your vector database, as well as analytics. And it also keeps all the other NoSQL properties such as it scales horizontally and it is secure. And for the customers who don't want to be locked into a single cloud, MongoDB can be run on different cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, and GCP. Okay, this is one of my favorite feature. MongoDB also has full MCP support. So your code and your local environment has full visibility of the schema of the table as well as the actual samples of the data without you needing to copy paste all that information. That's why customers like Wells Fargo, L'Oreal, Coinbase, and other large ones use MongoDB. All right, let's check out this MCP integration and joining different NoSQL tables in action. All right, let's try MongoDB in action. I'm in the MongoDB website. You can use your Gmail or GitHub account to log in. MongoDB also gives a free tier for you to try things out. And if I scroll down, you could see, you could choose from different cloud providers, AWS, Google, or Azure. With couple clicks, our MongoDB cluster is up and running. MongoDB also preloads your cluster with few sample collections. You can think collections as tables to test with. And once you create this cluster, MongoDB gives you a cluster connection string. You can use this cluster connection string to configure your MCP server as well as in your environment file to use in your code. I'm using, I'm showing this demo in Visual Studio Code with Klein. Now in Klein, I need to add this MCP setting using the same MongoDB connection string. MongoDB supports all the other popular IDEs as well. I'm gonna give the link in the description so you can check it out. As soon as I add this section in my MCP settings, I could see the MongoDB MCP server is up and running, but let's test it out. So I'm going to ask, give me the list of collections in my MongoDB cluster. All right, so the client automatically detects that I am connected to the MongoDB MCP server. So I'm just going to click approve so it can get the data. As you could see, the MongoDB free cluster comes with preloaded collections. So we have sessions, movies, theaters, users, etc. Now let's say you are an application developer and you want to use these collections and you want to see some sample data. Can you do that? Yes, right from my IDE. I'm going to ask, can you show me some sample records from movies, users, and comments? And as you could see, it's using the MongoDB MCP server again task completed, so it's showing me some movie names, the poor little rich girl, etc., etc., some users, data, as well as some comments. So hopefully you can beginning to understand that this is actually giving you actual records. So you don't need to go to MongoDB and copy paste stuff from there to your IDE. So now we are going to go one step further and code a Python program for by using these collections. So I'm going to ask, can you write me a Python code which will accept a movie name, derive movie ID, and join movies and comments collections using this movie ID? So this is another MongoDB superpower in display. I'm, I'm joining two different collections using a common field. All right. So now it is actually creating me this Python program. And again, it's using the actual schema that is found out 
actual records i didn't need to copy paste anything so it removes all the database hallucinations all right so now i have the sample python code which is joining the movies and the comments collections and giving me all the information the large language model also wrote me a sample test script so let's run this all right here we go movie traffic in souls some old movie huh yeah 1913 movie id genre plot imdb rating and it also found the comment all right so as you could see mongodb is utilizing both the superpowers of nosql as well as it has some additional superpowers of joining the table mcp server support etc uh, link in the description okay so let's wrap this up how you should handle sql versus nosql conversations and interview and real world projects okay so to recap this when you are faced with this question in interview or in your real world a project go beyond the average structured non-structured schema schemaless like i showed you in actual projects there are multiple different factors beyond this so you must be able to talk and discuss about those such as the scaling high availability joins etc next step keep in mind that different database engines has different features like i showed you mongodb has some features of the relational databases as well so you can combine them both if you choose a different database engine make sure to go over them. And if you can give examples of this in interviews or in your real world discussion, you will set yourself apart. And finally, remember in system design and application, there is no perfect tool. Every tool comes with their pros and cons. So it's all about selecting the right tool for the right job. If you get this question in your interview and customer conversation, make sure to knock it out of the park. Keep learning and keep rocking.